And tonight, we turn the focus to Utah's suicide crisis. Just last week, the FCC established a suicide hotline, just three digits long, remember this, 988. It's a result of Utah Representative Chris Stewart's National Suicide Hotline Improvement Act, and it's sparking a discussion about suicide right here in our state. According to the Utah Health Department, Utah's suicide rate is the fifth highest in the nation. An average of almost 600 Utahns die by suicide each year. More than 4,500 Utahns reportedly attempt it. And the largest group at risk might surprise you. ABC 4's Brittany Johnson joining us live in studio with more on that. Well, that's because the demographic we often talk most about when it comes to suicides is Utah teens. But look at this data behind me. You can see the working class men that falls in this group right here are uh, the numbers are significantly higher than Utah teens. We went to the Department of Health to find out why. Almost 600 Utahns lose their lives each year to suicide. The majority of those individuals, working class men between the ages of 25 and 64. It surprises people because we always hear so much about a teen suicide death. We don't really talk about what happens when your dad or your uncle or grandpa dies by suicide. Jenny Johnson with the Utah Department of Health says historically men are less likely to receive health care in general, especially when it comes to mental health. This data collected by health.utah.gov backs that statement. It shows more men die by suicide at a significantly higher rate than Utah women, but are less likely to be hospitalized and visit an emergency room. They may have additional stigmas that they feel they can't talk about it or seek help and we don't want them to feel like that. If someone asks for help, Johnson says you need to know what to say because your response could increase the risk of suicide for those who are already vulnerable. So it's important that, yeah, you talk about it, but now we need to give you some how to's of how to actually do it so that it's effective and safe. For men, Johnson says watch for changes in behavior, including an increase in substance abuse or use, anger issues, and not being able to sleep or sleeping all the time. If you are struggling, it's okay to struggle. We all struggle. There are many people who live with suicidal thoughts and live healthy lives. There's always hope. Treatment can and does work for mental health. Now, if you or anyone you know needs help, that number, that three digit number we gave you earlier is not active right now. So you need to call the Suicide Prevention Lifeline. The number's on your screen, 1-800-273-8255. This number, along with more resources, I'll be putting on our website, abc4.com. And Brittany, with numbers like that, there's got to be programs to help those most vulnerable, these working class men. There are a ton of programs put into place that a lot of people just don't know about, including one called Man Therapy. And that uses humor and media to connect, really connect to these men and their families uh, to provide them resources and facts and really help them if they're feeling any negative thoughts. Have you heard about that before? No, I haven't actually. So it was actually really popular when it was introduced back in Utah a couple years ago, but um, there was some controversy with it and mm -hmm. do, there's no funding for it. There's not a much funding for it anymore. Uh, so that's why you don't hear too much about it now. But it's still a resource. But it's still a resource. An important reminder yeah. to get out. Okay, thank you so All much, right. Brittany. We appreciate that report.